What's up, Simonics, and welcome back to an Ionic Newsflash episode. This time it's April 2021. Over the last month since our last Newsflash, there were a lot of new courses, quick wins, templates, tutorials, and information about your favorite framework, and especially a date that you should mark in your calendar, and that is the date of the Ionic conference 2021. You should definitely participate in this. It's an online event, you know, everything going on is right now all online. But the last event last year was already pretty great and the community really enjoyed it. So this year, definitely make sure you check out the IonicConf, you sign up for all the updates and especially if you have used uh, Ionic in the past with Capacitor, Vue, Angular, React, doesn't matter, apply for the conference to be a speaker. This is a great opportunity for you if you've perhaps never talked before uh, on a conference because you don't really like to be on stage. This is now 100% online and I would recommend that you apply as a speaker for that conference if you got anything interesting to share about Ionic. The Ionic community is really great and we're all in this together. So really, if you're interested, if you got anything interesting to share, check it out, Ionic Conf, and we will talk about this later at the end of our news flash again. But for now, let's dive into all of the new content that we got. <laughs> All right, as always, let's start with the Ionic Academy content. There are two new courses. There's a basic course on building an SJS API. I wanted to include this for quite some time. I never wanted to do it because it's not really Ionic related, but so many people asked about it. So we now got a basic course on building an SJS API and another course that highlights how to handle user roles, uh, specific permissions in actually a kind of real world application with a restaurant management. So um, different roles can uh, perform different jobs in that application. Really another cool example uh, for handling user roles. The next course will be actually very interesting. It will be a special build with Ionic course for the Ionic Academy where we built something like this. Uh, as you can see, this is from the Airbnb application and we will do a lot of cool things in that course. Otherwise, we have new quick wins um, that you might not have seen yet. Uh, this one on creating dynamic forms based on JSON data because I've seen this in quite some companies that usually have that information for form already somewhere set up and we generate a form based on JSON data. As well, uh, a logic to mostly force update your Ionic app, it's not 100% possible, but with a simple logic to retrieve some data, it is actually kind of possible to mostly block your application on startup and uh, present the user a dialog to download the latest version of your app in case that's necessary. Another quick win is the barcode scanner. I feel like we have now like five or six tutorials on barcode scanning with just JavaScript or with a plugin. And this one with Capacitor, I feel like it's the last one we need. This one worked really great. You can create a custom overlay, as you can see in the image with your own buttons, your own overlays in here, and it works really great. Then in terms of, uh, okay, another quick win was the app introduction tour, uh, something I tried a few years ago that didn't really work. Now it works kind of good. Um, so if you want to give your users a quick introduction to your application with different steps that they can perform, <clears throat> there's actually a cool package uh, which makes this possible. Also, uh, as we have a monthly template, our template archive is now kind of growing and the latest one was an e-commerce shop template. Not so much about the backend side and the checkout, that's also in another course inside the Academy, um, but it covers a cool UI like this, uh, where you can create your cart and where you get a nice little checkout step. Uh, so for all Ionic Academy members, every month there's now a new cool template. In terms of blog content, of course, uh, one of the flagship contents I would say is the build with Ionic Netflix tutorial. Uh, a lot of cool things in this. It's really long. It takes super long to set up those tutorials. So I really hope you enjoyed the build with Ionic uh, series and there will definitely be more in the future. And then I finally gave Superbase a try. Uh, we also discussed this in the vlog, Superbase with a Firebase. I really enjoyed using Superbase so far. Um, they've come up with a few new features since then. So I'll uh, very soon create a new tutorial on using storage functionality of Superbase as well. And I think 
this could really be a nice um, alternative to Firebase in the future. Then I also went into more responsive things because Ionic 6 will focus a bit more on desktop support. So I thought, why not create something like this upfront where you have a cool default header, a uh, default site menu on small screens, but actually a real header on bigger screens. And we will see something on a dropdown later. This is actually version 5, Ionic 5, still uh, with just some custom code. But if you want to build websites, check this out. And finally, another one on handling user roles on the blog with uh, directives and permissions. We had this in the past, it was kind of outdated, so this is an updated and up-to-date version. That's everything for the content so far. Now let's talk about what's new on the Ionic blog. Um, Mike shared a nice little uh, tutorial on using ESLint for Ionic Angular now. In the past, you might actually have never seen it, but your project was usually using TSLint unless you've configured it differently. TSLint is now deprecated. You should switch over to ESLint. All new Ionic uh, templates, so when you run from the command line, the, uh, the command to start a new Ionic application will already use ESLint. And with an Angular schematic, it's actually pretty easy to update your application to ESLint, and that's definitely recommended for the future. Something I've answered like 10 questions about because I've used Ionic Storage in a lot of tutorials and with Ionic Storage 3, there's a little deprecation, uh, not deprecation warning, it's actually a breaking change because um, the import for the latest version of Ionic Storage has changed for the usage with Angular. And if you now want to use Ionic Storage, you also need to call Storage Create in the beginning. Um, the rest of the usage is still the same, um, but there are a few steps that you now need to take when you're working with Ionic Storage. And as you just install Ionic Storage, you usually get the latest version. So check out this on the blog as well if you are using Ionic Storage. Then what I found as well, not so much from Max or Ben this time, but from Liam, I found two cool little hints for what we can expect with Ionic 6. This one's an example of, in general, this is already cool for the accordion component that they are working on. And you can uh, use reduced motion or the reduced motion setting on iOS, which the component respects to immediately open things. Uh, but overall, I'm really looking forward to that Ionic, uh, that accordion component, and I think you will love it as well. At the same time, Liam also shared this. And I think, um, I'm pretty sure you will love this. So uh, this popover component, definitely something helpful for desktop or web versions. Um, I, I don't need to say a lot about this. It just looks great. I hope it works great, but I'm sure they will implement it like all the other components. So it will be quite easy to use. Um, I don't know if we actually need this pattern on mobile. Um, don't really think so, no, that won't work. Um, but for web, this will be great. And another piece in the puzzle to creating great websites with Ionic. Um, finally, once again, the uh, note uh, or bringing your attention to the Ionic Conf, uh, June 23, definitely sign up here to get all the information about the event. And as well, if you are interested in speaking, apply to speak. I think it's still possible until the end of April. Um, so simply apply, insert whatever, come up with an easy topic, and perhaps that's your first chance. Hey, that's a cool animation. Uh, perhaps that's your first chance of speaking at an event 100% online. I also expect maybe a little uh, something from the Ioni company because it's not too far in the future. Ionic 6 isn't released yet. So maybe we see Ionic 6 perhaps released at the Ionic Conf would be a cool date. Um, Capacitor 3 might actually be ready uh, up front. We're still at the release candidate or perhaps when the video comes out, it's already uh, released, but I don't think so. So um, check it out, Ionic IO slash Ionic Conf for all the updates regarding the Ionic Conf. All right, and that's it for today's newsflash. I hope you enjoyed all the quick updates about all the content that we've seen and the quick spoilers of Ionic version 6 and especially the Ionic Conf that you should definitely attend and also 
try to speak it if you got anything to share about Ionic or just want to try how this conference speaking stuff works. I will definitely apply as well after this video. I got a few ideas already, so I will submit them pretty soon and you should do the same. Until the next news flash comes out, I really hope that we will finally see the real release of Capacitor 3, not just a release candidate, but the final stable release. And then we will definitely have a detailed video on all the changes of Capacitor 3 and everything that you can change, should change, and all the new possibilities. For Ionic version 6, I have no idea when it comes out. My idea is that it might be somewhere close to the Ionic conference, um, so perhaps that's also something to look forward. If you enjoyed our quick news flash, as always, hit the like button, stay subscribed to the channel for all the other upcoming Ionic videos. I've got quite a few cool tutorials coming over the next time. Uh, we got to talk about RxJS and more build with Ionic stuff, so definitely sign up and have a great week with your favorite Ionic framework. No, ah, anyway, just have a great week and I will catch you next week like always. So happy coding, Simon.